number five by the Senate Judiciary Committee relating to subpoenas issued by the Senate Judiciary Committee and to compliance with those subpoenas. Thank you, Senator Ellis. The President, members have the uh, resolution on their desk. So at this time, I move that the Senate resolution number five be taken up at this time. Thank you. Without objection, uh, so ordered. Is there discussion? Senator French. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Um, this resolution really is a resolution, Mr. President. It resolves one of the more troubling episodes of the recent past. As you know, this last fall, the Senate Judiciary Committee issued a series of subpoenas, and uh, a number of the subpoenaed witnesses did not show up in conformity uh, as, the, as the subpoenas required. While the particular circumstances, I think, of this past fall's um, um, uh, landscape are very unlikely to ever be repeated. What we're doing here today is affirming that there are higher principles that transcend the given circumstances of any uh, political flat. The Judiciary Committee subpoenas were issued in strict conformity with the law, essentially ordered those witnesses to appear before it, the subpoenas were lawful, and the subpoenas were disobeyed. Mr. President, we've been called a nation of laws. And in our system of government, an order is an order unless it's been countermanded by a higher authority. The Attorney General did bring suit questioning the validity of the subpoenas. However, you will see from the timeline in the resolution that he waited until the last moment to do so. The arguments advanced against the subpoenas were neither nuanced nor novel. They did not persuade the first judicial officer who considered them. The Attorney General's suit was, frankly, tossed out of court on its ear. I don't want to get sidetracked by the Attorney General's performance in this episode, but it's worth pointing out that this resolution does not resolve questions, significant and serious questions, about his actions during this time. The resolution also, I believe, Mr. President, shows the Senate at its best. The resolution memorializes the fact that contempt was committed by a number of witnesses, but it also recognizes that this was a rather unique set of facts. And it recognizes that once the suit was tossed out of court, the witnesses quickly complied with the request for sworn written statements made by special counsel Stephen Branchflower. The swift cooperation is, in the language of law, Mr. President, a mitigator. It lessens the wrongdoing. And for that fact, and for that reason, the resolution calls for the imposition of no penalty. The resolution strikes a balance, Mr. President. And I believe it is a good and proper balance. I urge your support and ask for the support of the members. Thank you, Senator French. Is there further discussion? <laughs> Senator Monday. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I uh, wasn't going to rise, but when I heard the comment of the previous speaker, the Senate at its best, we re rehash an old issue and then decide to do nothing about it. Uh, I hope that's not our best. Thank you, Senator Monday. Uh, further discussion? The question being, Shall Senate Resolution Number 5 pass the Senate? Senators may proceed to vote. Have all Senators voted? Uh, the Secretary will lock the roll. Do any Senators wish to change their vote? The Secretary will record the vote. And the Secretary will tally the vote. 16 yeas, one nay. And so, Senate Resolution 5 has passed the Senate. 